I'm beginning a, uh, a new series. I don't know how many parts it'll have. Um, and I'm just calling it Knowing God's Direction. Um, there's been tons of books and conferences. There's tons of stuff out there. It's been going on for years. Um, you know, how to know the voice of God, the voice of God, hearing the voice of God, you know, a lot of stuff like that. Um, this isn't quite the same kind of thing, but I suppose it runs, you know, parallel. It, it's relative. Uh, and it really, I was prompted um, just because, once again, this last week, um, I met with people and you're praying together about God's direction. And to be honest with you, much of my pastoral ministry over the years has been praying with and for people, you know, regarding direction. Um, and I'm not saying, you know, me hearing from God and giving them direction, just getting together with people that it's, it's something that we all uh, would like to know more about or be able to understand better or have some tools that we can work with that, you know, just kind of help. So we, we've been kind of, to be honest with you, we've been skirting around the subject a bit for weeks as we've been in Acts chapter 8 through 10, where we've looked at the way Philip went to Samaria, the Holy Spirit spoke to him, an angel of the Lord appears, Peter has a vision, Cornelius has a vision, the angel of the Lord, the Spirit, you know, there's been all kinds of different things that we read in the book of Acts. And I think our instincts are sort of like, yeah, well, if I had an angel of the Lord appear, or if I had this, or, and um, I don't personally take exception to that, but I think it just, it's an easy thing to say that almost releases us from having to perhaps study, pray, talk more together, and really determine, actually, we're people just like they were, and God is still doing things the way he did before. Mm -hmm. So these kind of, they almost become like cop-outs to say, well, if this, if that, well, if I raised my magic wand and the Red Sea parted, then, you know, and it's kind of eh, unfair wrong. I think that... Um, we have a lot in the Bible, tons and tons of examples and principles and, um, that help us. And more than any of that, we do have the Spirit of God in us. Mm -hmm. Our lack of faith in that produces a lot of the negative results that we have. We, we say it, you know, it comes out of our mouths, but we don't actually wait on God and expect to hear here, mm -hmm. to really get the direction we need right here, because that's where he abides. So, um, I'm just going to be sharing some thoughts. Um, I think I had seven or eight of them, something like that. So, uh, tonight, I've got three here. If we get through them, great. If we don't, great. Um, and I'll just be continuing for the next few weeks, probably, it sounds to me, knowing me through June anyway. Um, about this particular subject, topic, knowing God's direction. They're just some of my thoughts. You know, a lot of it is going to be stuff perhaps that you've heard or thought about before, but maybe hearing it here in a different context helps us a bit. They're not in any particular order. It's not like number one is the most important, number two. I just, um, to be honest with you, following the conversation we had, I started to pray, and it this happens sometimes. I can't write fast enough because God is downloading so quickly. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what happened. So um, the first one that I wrote down here is that life is not a matter of like God decreeing every and each step we take. Mm -hmm. You can talk to some Christians and some pastors and they could almost lead you to believe that that we're kind of like each step we take is divinely ordained and we're either following this perfectly good path or we're not, you know, this kind of thing. 
Um, that it's really, like that, huh? no, it, it, it's not even close to that, quite frankly. What I put down here is at best, I think, you know, all of us, I think, at one time or another have connected the dots in, a, in a, one of those little things that they draw. Mm -hmm. And when you first look, all you see is a page full of dots. Now, there, there's meaning to those dots. There's a shape. But you have to take out your pen or your pencil, your crayon, whatever, and you have to connect the dots. And if you connect the dots in the right way, the right way meaning they actually tell you how to, it tells you go from one to two. If you do that, you draw that line, then two to three, three to four, you don't have to totally finish the whole thing. It kind of becomes clear what it is. You guys know what I'm talking about. Well, it's sort of like that. God throws the dots down, but he doesn't connect them. That's our job. Now, you know, if you, you know, Jesus had said something, remember Jesus had said something about, you know, that not turning back once you started to plow, you don't turn back. And we all know that, you know, you kind of like follow your head. And we kind of like do that with the dots on the paper. You know, we start drawing from one to two, and maybe I look over, I see a good-looking guy, and I, my, and I kind of, oh, gee, come back over here. And life is a bit like that. We start heading for the next dot. But somehow, you know, you remember when he says to Joshua, don't turn to the right or the left? It's like, you know, how long do you want to take to get from the first dot to the second dot? Your call. You know, if you want to use a pen that has no ink in it, so you run out of ink halfway there, like the Spirit of God, I mean, you can do that if you want. Isn't it better to have a full pen so you know that the line, you're full of the Spirit and you're going from, line, from point to point. The point I'm trying to make is this idea that um, every step we take is like this divinely ordered step is not consistent with the Word of God. I used another example I wrote down there. He's like the owner coach of a, of a team. He calls the plays. He doesn't run them. You've got a team. Everybody's got their role to play. They've got their positions. They do their job. What will the outcome be if everybody does their job? Who knows? It'll be something. It'll be better if they don't than when they don't do their job or not having a coach. You see, God isn't like he's not out there playing every position, all of us all the time. I'm not saying that life is like a big game or connecting the dots. What I'm trying to say is that this idea that, you know, God is moving me to scratch my ear. God is moving me to say every word that I'm saying right now. God is moving me to sit. It's lunacy. This is life. This is life. And every step is not something that is kind of ordained that way. Let's read a few Psalms and some of, a couple of verses from Isaiah to kind of support, you know, what I'm saying. Um... Psalm 17.5. Who wants to read that? Aaron's got 17.5. Who wants to go to Isaiah? I will. Isaiah 30, verse 21. Where is um, it? And who else wants? Somebody else in Isaiah? I'll get two Isaiah people. Okay. Russ, you got Isaiah 52.12. Another Psalm. I'll take a Psalm. 37.23. Psalm 37, verse 23. And a proverb. Sure. Okay, you've got Proverbs 20, verse 24. And, and I'd like to, uh, which one, dear, for you? Isaiah. Isaiah 30, verse 21. 30. Okay. Um, the Psalms that we're reading are from David. The proverb that we're going to read is from his son, which is kind of cool. And we've also got a couple of prophetic scriptures from Isaiah. So, Psalm 17, 5. Whoever's got that, just go ahead and read it. Uphold my steps in your paths, that my footsteps may not slip. Now this is a prayer from David to God. Read it one more time. Uphold my steps in your paths, that my footsteps may not slip. Now, what he's talking about, the implication when you look at it in the Hebrew... He's talking about like walking a straight line. He was talking about connecting to dots. Hopefully, the shortest distance between those two dots is the best one to do. That's what David's talking about. 
help keep me on a straight line. David knows that he's the one that's walking that line. God bless you. And it's really kind of funny because the footsteps that he implies, they have like a rhythmic beat. So he's kind of saying to God, keep me going straight and keep my rhythm good. In other words, I don't want to break my rhythmic pattern here. Mm. So it's like... You can set your watch to the timing of my rhythm. You know, he's just kind of walking through this thing. But he's the one who's walking. He's praying to God to help him in his walk. He's making his way from point A to point B. And when he says, when he's talking about being held up, not like, you know, being held up with a gun, but hold me up. Again, the words, he's like screaming, help. Help. Help me. I know I got to walk this thing out. I know that every step isn't divine, but you are. Help me. And actually, it's kind of interesting because then it me, it, what's attached to the meaning is follow me closely. In other words, he's not saying I'm following you. Other places, he says, I'm following you. Lead me in the paths of righteousness. They're interesting concepts, which is what Isaiah picks up on. Isaiah 30, 21. Your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. Did you catch that? You're going to hear a voice behind you. So, I mean, who's in front? You. you are. You're walking, and Isaiah's saying, don't worry about it. You'll hear a voice behind you. Well, that's helpful. Shouldn't the voice be in front of me? I had this experience, basically, years and years ago when I was at Greece Assembly, and there was a, I knew that there was a pastoral call on my life. Carol knew it. We had prayed together. God confirmed it. But because I had come out of a broken marriage, I was in a second marriage, the Assemblies of God, you know, you're like, you know, there ain't no way you're ever going to be a pastor in the Assemblies of God. This was back in the 80s. But I knew the call was there. And I talked to a guy, and he said, well, just walk it out. I said, what do you mean, walk it out? He said, get up from behind that desk you're sitting at, which I was a music minister, so I was on staff behind the desk, and walk it out. I didn't have a clue what he meant. Hmm. I could not figure out how do you walk out something that you just start walking it out. And he was coming from a place of because that's the way we walk. We walk it out and you will hear a voice behind you saying, eh, nope, not that way. Turn to the right. Start going to the, no, not that far to the right. I said, well, that's helpful. Why don't you get in front of me and show me? Isaiah says something else. Isaiah 52, 12, who had that? Me. But you will not go out in haste, nor will you go as fugitives, for the Lord will go before you, and the God of Israel will be your rear guard. Mm. So he's saying, I got your back, and I will go before you. I do go before my people. What I'm trying to say is this, is that this walk is not, you know, while we're saying, okay, I like that Isaiah 52 one, go ahead before me, make, you know, and I'll follow you. And God is saying, yeah, well, sometimes we do that. If you ever asked your son, would you please get my slippers for me? Where are they? They're over there, and he starts walking. Yeah, they're behind there. I don't get up, and I, I don't do this. I don't say, would you please get my slippers for me? Let me show you where they are. And I walk to where my slippers are, and I say, they're right here. Now, would you please give them to me? Well, it's lunacy. <laughs> yes? No? It doesn't work that way. Dad says, go that way. Just go. It's your walk. It's your walk. Proverbs 20, 24. Or, excuse me. Uh, Psalm 3723. We sing this one. Can I sing it? You can if you want to, dear. I love your voice. <laughs> the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, though he fall, he shall not be cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. And that was 24, too. But that's part of the song. Yes, I had. Yeah, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. 
the part that I like about that is though he fall though, though he, he fall yeah so the falling is understood but he's not going to be cast down no he's going to be lifted mm -hmm. back up again oh. yeah. it has the same implications as the other psalm we read it's by David it has the same implications but this time the word that he used for footsteps is a little different this time the footsteps imply companionship like you're walking together mm -hmm. The steps of a man are ordered by the Lord. In other words, what he's saying is, I'm walking this out with you, but it's almost like dancing with the Lord. He says, you're leading. <laughs> what? So come on, let's dance. You lead. So can you look at it that he has a plan? Got, got the general picture, the dots, the outline, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but you walk it out, and sometimes you go this way, sometimes you go that way, but... We are not puppets. Okay. And God himself understands the beauty and the wonder of life is that dot to dot journey. Mm -hmm. That is where all the beauty, the wonder, everything that we enjoy, that's where it is, is in the journey. He has certain dots that he has ordained, but getting from one to the other, mm -hmm. running the play, mm -hmm. I mean, what good is having a position on a team if you never play? But you have a position, yeah. but you never play. How much fun would it be to take your trumpet to a gig and stand there for four hours? <laughs> Makes no sense. I want to play. Play what? What I want to play. I play trumpet. It's a beautiful thing that God's given us with life. And the idea, you know, a lot of us were like walking on eggs half the time. Oh, did God this, did God that? Relax. Enjoy life. 